Good afternoon. My name is Tavia Danch, and I am the Community Outreach Manager at Colorado State University Global. I am pleased to welcome you to CSU Global's Career Success Webinar Series. We have a great program for you today, and I am excited to begin this afternoon's discussion. But first, I wanted to share a little about us. We have over a decade of leadership in providing quality online education for working adults, and you'll learn much more about our wonderful university in this presentation. So with that, I would like to introduce you to Travis Souffal, which is our Senior Director of Engagement, and Stan Kripak, which is our Engagement Operations Manager at CSU Global. During this webinar, Travis and Stan will be sharing information on how to determine if online education is right for you, what to expect from your online degree, the advantages of online education, the various degree programs. With that, I'll turn the time over to Travis and Stan. Well, everybody, welcome. Thank you so much for joining us. My name is Stan Kirpak, and today we're going to be uh, launching off by talking a little bit more about CSU Global. And as Tavi alluded to, we are the nation's first independent, 100% online public university. And essentially, this university was created to uh, serve modern learners um, in Colorado and beyond through 100% online course offerings. And we are certainly committed to academic excellence and driving learning solutions through career relevant degree programs. Now, being a part of the Colorado State University system, I wanted to explain a little bit more about how we fit into that role. So the Colorado State University system is comprised of three separate campuses across the state of Colorado. The flagship campus, Colorado State University, is in Fort Collins, and that was one of the original land grant institutions. It's got a rich history of over more than 100 years. Then we have down in southern Colorado in the town of Pueblo, we have CSU Pueblo, and that is uh, a campus that really serves that regional population in southern Colorado. And uh, CSU Global, uh, our university is in Greenwood Village, Colorado, and we provide all the 100% online degree programs for the CSU system. So we are part of the CSU system. We all share the same board of governors, though we are all three are separate entities. So I just wanted to give you that overview of how CSU Global fits into this picture. And you can always visit um, uh, csusystem.org to learn more about how these three campuses interact and which campus might be the best for you. All right, well, as we've said several times, um, we are the first 100% online state university. That's something we're very proud of. Uh, that means that CSU Global is nonprofit. Uh, any money that we generate, we turn back into our programs and into supporting our students. Uh, and we are a public state university. Uh, we are also unique in being an independent campus. That is something that differentiates us from other state universities that provide an online format, uh, that we are in fact a standalone independent university. Uh, and we are just designed for online learning. So it is not just something that we do, it's the only thing we do. It's something that we really excel at. Uh, we do focus on having career relevant programs. And that means that we want our students to have a good return on the investment that they pay in their tuition dollars. Uh, so we do only focus on programs where folks can earn a good living wage uh, and in career areas that we expect to see growth in the future. One thing we're particularly proud of at CSU Global is that our tuition rates have not increased for the last eight years. Uh, we guarantee your tuition once you begin courses with us. So whatever tuition rate you start with, so long as you maintain your uh, enrollment with CSU Global, your tuition rate is guaranteed. And we have not increased those rates for the, um, the last eight years. And uh, just to kind of piggyback off of that, uh, CSU Global uh, ranks as typically uh, in the top 10 best online providers in the world. Um, 
essentially we rank number eight for best online bachelor's degree programs in U.S. News and World Report 2019. I won't get into every one of these specific rankings, but our programs uh, usually are very highly ranked in the competitive market of online degree programs. Uh, some of our strongest programs, data analytics, uh, generally our master's programs are ranked extremely high. So whether you're looking for a bachelor's, undergraduate level, or a master's at the graduate level, you can find ourselves uh, ranked extremely high and you can search for these rankings yourself as you're conducting your research. All right, we're going to transition to talk about whether an online program is right for you. Uh, and that is a difficult decision for people to make because there are many folks out there that prefer to be face-to-face, -face, who prefer to have that in-class interaction, um, and in some cases still need to choose online because of the flexibility. So one of the most important things to ask is what your goals are. There are certain programs that will have practical elements that cannot be done entirely 100% online. So in those instances, it's really important to know whether or not you, um, depending on what program you're looking for, whether that program would be available in an online format. Uh, certainly for somebody who's considering online, you need to enjoy being on the computer and using the internet uh, and, be, and be pretty savvy with technology. Um, our classes are very heavy in reading and writing and you will be spending a lot of time in front of your computer and on the internet. So that is an important consideration. Another, as I mentioned before, is whether or not you're able to learn outside of the classroom setting. Uh, your coursework at CSU Global is very much self-paced and you are watching lectures and doing reading independently and responding to discussion posts and writing papers as part of your coursework. Uh, so you will need to make sure that you're comfortable not having that classroom interaction. And then finally, you need to ask, are you self-motivated and good at staying organized? Um, the reason for that is it takes a good deal of dedication and commitment in order to be successful in this format. Um, and so uh, because you don't have that instructor at the front of the classroom to hold you accountable, you really have to be self-motivated and hold yourself accountable to getting your coursework done and staying on track. Yes, and certainly, if you do choose to pursue an online education, there are several advantages to consider. One of the main ones being flexibility. So our programs are designed to be extremely flexible and they're specifically designed for the non-traditional learner. So what that means is that you can work while you're finishing out your degree. And the way that you're able to do that is that the courses themselves are asynchronous in nature. Basically what that means is that there's never really a time that you have to be logged into the system doing coursework, okay? You certainly have due dates throughout the week, but as long as you're completing your work and turning your work in on time, you can get that work done whenever you need to. So there's a great deal of flexibility that's built into our, pro our programs. You know, if there's ever any live lectures, they'll always be recorded for you. The next big advantage is you can complete your coursework from anywhere. So if you travel a lot for your work already, you, as long as you have an internet connection and your computer, you can get your work done. Uh, we do have a lot of uh, mobile friendly um, software that if you needed to work on a tablet, or a smartphone, you can complete coursework that way as well. So it, for, it allows you to be really mobile and allows you to complete your coursework uh, from anywhere, just as long as you have that solid connection. And you can complete, as we alluded to, uh, classes on your own time frame. 
meaning that if you need to uh, register for some terms but not others, you can do that as well. So if you know you have a really busy couple of months ahead of you, you can uh, take a short break and then come back eight weeks later. That will not affect you academically. So uh, it is really flexible in that way too to, with regard to when you are registered in classes. Um, another great advantage of online education is our faculty come from all over the United States and they have career relevant and industry experience that they tie directly into the curriculum. So we're not limited geographically to a, a pool of uh, instructors and professors. You know, we can draw the top tier talent from all over the United States to uh, teach these courses. And then of course, the cost is lower when we're talking about CSU Global's uh, uh, tuition rate. Uh, we have extremely, extremely competitive, uh, low cost tuition, which uh, really can save you a lot of money. We have different ways that you can use. You can test out of classes, you can write yourself out of classes. Uh, we have a lot of ways you could transfer in credit from your previous institutions. So our main goal is to help you graduate without spending a, a great deal of money. So those are just a few of the advantages uh, of online education. Now, I do wanna to talk to you more about the actual programs that we do offer. And I think as Travis alluded to a little bit earlier, these really are going to be focused on industries and career relevant um, fields. So also programs are going to be uh, well adapted to an online format. So our strongest programs typically revolve around business management as well as technology. So some of our strongest programs would be the Bachelor of Science in Business Management, the Bachelor of Science in Project Management, Information Technology. Uh, so de depending on what type of coursework you'd like to pursue, we do have quite a lot of options that are relevant for career choices. And also at the master's level, uh, we do have uh, similar type of programs. Um, so depending on what you're wanting to do, if these programs seem to fit your career or your future trajectory. You can pursue any of these programs just so long as you meet the admissions requirements as well as any of the prerequisite knowledge required to move into these programs. So I will go ahead and move on. I wanna segue into the idea that we also offer short-term certificates that can be rolled up into these either undergraduate or graduate programs. So you can, for instance, start out with a smaller credential, like let's say a undergraduate certificate in human resource management, and you could roll that into a bachelor of science degree in business management, for example. You can get a graduate certificate in cybersecurity and roll that into a master's degree in information technology management. So there's different ways to diversify your skill set through earning a certificate first and then transferring that certificate into a bachelor's or into a master's degree. And that's what we call a stackable credential. So there's a lot of ways to really uh, gain a lot of uh, relevant skills and then pursue your degree at a higher level should you so choose to. So certainly certificates are a great way to go if you're interested in a more of a short, short term educational commitment. And then later on, if you so choose, you can move forward to a full degree. And certainly there's probably going to be some questions about this and we can discuss this in the Q&A section because um, it is really interesting and uh, you can customize your degree in many different ways. All right. Uh, so in terms of what to expect as a student at CSU Global, students have the opportunity to attend either full or part-time. 
Uh, so being a full-time undergraduate student means that you're taking two courses in each one of your eight-week terms. As a graduate level student, you're just taking one course per term uh, every eight weeks. Uh, and we have varying expectations for the amount of time that you'll spend completing the coursework. Uh, so we do expect that our undergraduate students spend between 12 and 15 hours per course completing their studies. And for graduate students, between 15 and 20 hours each week. Uh, as we've mentioned, there's a variety of interactive learning that you'll do. When you're in a science course or a math course or an information technology course, it will be different because there will be simulations and more project-based learning. Whereas when you are taking um, some of our more traditional subjects, you'll be doing a lot of reading and writing. Um, completing discussion posts where you're interacting with your classmates and also submitting written assignments each week. Um, the courses are though self-paced in terms of when you complete that work. So as we've said, there's no specific time that you need to be logged into the classroom uh, and you are able to complete that work when it's convenient for you, which is probably one of the most important reasons that people choose an online program. Yes, and I suppose I, I guess I should also mention there's no group work expectations. So um, while you do um, work with your classmates and replying to their discussions, things like that, you're not expected to uh, work on group projects. Yes, great point. Uh, now, regarding our enrollment requirements uh, for the bachelor's degree students, you would either be considered a, a freshman student or a transfer student. And that depends both on your age and also on the number of credits that you've previously completed. So someone who is either over the age of 23 or who has completed more than 24 college level credits already would be considered a transfer student. And for those students, we expect that you have a 2.3 GPA either from high school or from college credits that you've already completed. And uh, we do also require that you have two years of work experience. The reason we have a work experience requirement is because many of our discussion posts and assignments that you'll complete are very practically based. And so you will need to have had some work experience to draw upon to answer those prompts. Uh, for the master's degree, we expect that students have a conferred bachelor's degree from a regionally accredited institution with a 3.0 GPA or higher. Now for either of the programs, if you don't meet those GPA requirements, you still have the option to apply provisionally and that would mean that there are some additional documents that we would require from you. We would ask you to submit a statement about your intention to pursue the program, your professional resume, and a quick assessment that looks at your ability to be successful in an online format. Uh, we do also accept military credit and training for transfer. So if you have served in the military or are currently serving, we will ask you to provide your joint services transcript or a transcript from the Community College of the Air Force because we will transfer those credits towards your degree completion for an undergraduate program. Um, for students who are considered first-time freshmen, meaning you are under the age of 23 and you have less than 24 credits completed, uh, we do also look at either an ACT or SAT score, but that's the only category of student that we require an entrance exam for, are those who are younger than the age of 23 and who have completed less than 24 college credits. Great, thank you, Travis. So, you might be asking yourself, what would be the steps to enroll? So really it's quite simple. 
the very first thing that students do is they fill out the university application. And there's the link, but we will be sending out an email with this link, as well as an application fee waiver code. Um, typically, the application is $25. But for those who attend this webinar, we'll go ahead and waive that application fee so you can apply for free. So once your application has been received by the enrollment department, we'll also ask for all of your transcripts, right? So at the undergraduate level, if you, at the bachelor's level, if you uh, have community college credits, uh, if you've attended any other institutions, we wanna get those transcripts sent in. Now transcripts can be sent in either by snail mail or by electronic delivery. Um, we always ask that if you have the option for electronic delivery, opt for that just because the transcripts uh, arrive much quicker. And from there, if you meet all the admissions requirements, uh, you will work with an enrollment counselor to get enrolled, you'll go through orientation, and then you'll start class. So uh, the enrollment counselor will really be that guidance counselor to help move you from first contact all the way to starting your courses. And then you'll be supported by our student success department all the way until you graduate. So uh, whatever point um, you need help, there'll always be somebody on the phone. Um, just because we are an online university, uh, uh, you're not gonna be by yourself. You're not gonna be on an island. You know, we uh, have a lot of support structures there. Uh, everything from your student success advisors, you know, financial advisors, um, career center advisors, uh, you have access to a library. So uh, moving through the process, you'll have a great deal of support. So I will go ahead and move on to the Q&A section. So uh, perhaps uh, now we can address some of the questions that have been raised throughout the webinar. Thank you, Stan and Travis. That was wonderful. And we do have a bunch of questions. So we will go ahead and get started on those. So first question. Where can I find scholarships for an online degree program? Yeah, so certainly there are scholarships that CSU Global does offer every trimester. So every four months we have uh, the option for students to apply for scholarships and those can be found on our website. If you go to csuglobal.edu and click on cost, there's a scholarships tab and there's an array of scholarships available to uh, different types of students. So I encourage you to look at those scholarships that we do offer as we do uh, give out standard scholarships uh, three times a year. And often we do have additional scholarships that we do send out outside of those standard uh, offerings. So uh, I would say explore our website. And if you're in touch with our enrollment counselors do bring that question up and they'll be able to kind of go into each one of those scholarship options in greater detail. I will right. add that we have a wonderful feature that we partner with called Scholarship Universe. And if you take the time to complete a profile on the Scholarship Universe site, it will identify a lot of scholarships that you're eligible for. So we have institutional scholarships that we provide at CSU Global, but there are also a variety of other scholarships out there that you might qualify for. And that Scholarship Universe tool will help uh, point you in the right direction of scholarships that you specifically are eligible for based on how you answer those questions. Great, thank you. Next question, does CSU Global offer a management degree? We do. Yes, so at the undergraduate level, we have a business management degree. Um, and really, a lot of our programs are in areas related to management, um, like healthcare administration and management, in particular, project management, um, human resources. Uh, and also at the graduate level, we don't have an MBA, we do have a um, a organizational leadership program uh, and several others that are in business related fields as well. Information technology management, HR management, um, management itself. 
Great, thank you. How long are written assignments? So written assignments at the undergraduate level typically are each week. Um, if it is a course that is very um, focused on writing, it's going to be three to six pages double spaced each week. At the graduate level, you're looking at uh, probably six to 12 pages uh, double spaced each week. Um, now, not all classes will require uh, written assignments. Most will. Uh, but as Travis, I think, mentioned earlier in the presentation, if you're in um, information technology, if you're in accounting, uh, if you're in a more technical program, rather than um, writing papers every week, you might work with uh, lab simulation software. You might be putting together some sort of Excel project. Uh, you might be working with um, some sort of um, programming uh, software. So uh, in, in terms of how long are the papers, yeah, at the undergraduate level, I would say three to six pages is typical per week and the graduate level, uh, six to 12 pages, just depending on the week. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. Is there a pen any penalty for taking a break between courses? There is not. Uh, students can take breaks as they need. Of course, we encourage you to stick with it because we know that folks who uh, get on a roll are more likely to complete. Uh, however, you are not penalized. Uh, we do, students do become withdrawn from the university if you go an entire calendar year without taking any courses. And would you have to apply again in that case? You would have to go through the re-entry process. So it is essentially going through the enrollment process again after you've been out for a year. Okay. Approximately how much would a bachelor's degree cost per course per year? And also if you wanna throw in the master's degree cost, that'd be great. Sure, so the cost per credit at the undergraduate level is $350 per credit. And the graduate cost per credit is $500 per credit. So if you're uh, starting out from scratch, the cost of an undergraduate degree is $42,000. And uh, starting out from scratch with a master's degree, it's $18,000. But most students do bring in quite a lot of credit. And we'll basically take any credit that you have, just as long as it comes in with a grade of C or higher. So the more credits you bring in, obviously the less cost you have to incur. And um, you know we do have a lot of ways for you to cut that cost down. Now, the great thing is 350 per credit, 500 per credit at the graduate level. Uh, that includes everything except the book for the course that you need. So there's no additional fees. There's no lab fees. There's no tech fees. It's essentially $350 per credit plus books at the undergraduate level and $500 per credit plus books at the graduate level. And uh, if you are a military uh, or veteran, you do uh, get a 10% tuition discount. Wonderful. Is there an in-state and out-of-state distinction between tuition? There is not. So our students in the state of Colorado pay the same as students across the U.S. and around the world. We have just the one tuition rate. Um, in addition, we partner with over 2,000 uh, corporate businesses who are our affiliate partners. So Stan mentioned the 10% discount for service members and veterans. We also have that discount for employees of those organizations. And also we have uh, several community college partners. So if you've graduated from one of our affiliate community colleges, you'd also be eligible for that 10% discount. But no in-state in or out-of-state tuition. Wonderful. Um, I know we spoke about this during the presentation. Um, is the GRE required to be admitted to the mass any master's program? No, we do not require the GRE. The bulk of the admissions decision is going to be based off of the undergraduate GPA. So again, what we're looking for at the graduate level is going to be, um, do you have a conferred bachelor's degree from a regionally accredited institution? 
And do you have a GPA at 3.0 or higher? And that would be automatic admission. And if the GPA is below a 3.0, we would be looking at provisional admission. So at that uh, point, you would go through committee. So no, a GRE or GMAT is not required uh, for enrollment into CSU Global graduate work. Great, next question. I want to get my master's degree, but I'm not sure what program to choose. Would my enrollment counselor help me with this decision or are there any other resources that you can guide me to? Yeah, absolutely. Our enrollment counselors are trained to be experts in the programs and the differences between them. So they would conduct an initial phone call with you to understand what your career and professional goals are and help point you in the direction of the most appropriate degree program um, as a result of your goals. We also have the opportunity for prospective students to schedule a career coaching se session with one of our career coaches. And again, the enrollment counselor can help you get set up with that as well. So perhaps you are debating between a leadership or management degree and you wanna know which one is best for you. Uh, you can certainly speak with our enrollment team about that and we can get you set up with a career coach as well who is a faculty member so they are knowledgeable about the program in general but also about whatever the field is that you'd be studying in. Wonderful, thank you. What is the difference between a certificate and a specialization? Oh, that's actually a great question. So at the undergraduate level and at the graduate level, uh, you can have a specialization. So what that basically means is uh, at the bachelor's level, you could think of a specialization as a quote unquote minor. So your major could be business management and your uh, specialization or minor could be human resource management. Basically, as long as you have enough elective credit, you can attach a specialization to an undergraduate degree. Now, at the graduate level, uh, a specialization typically is required. So um, you would have, out of the 12 graduate classes you have, eight would be your core classes, and four of those eight classes would be a specialization that you choose. Now, the difference between those specializations and a certificate is typically a specialization is a part of your formal degree program, right? So if you have the space for it in your undergraduate degree, you can add a minor. At the graduate level, you have to have a specialization. Now, a certificate is something that you could take on its own. You do not need to matriculate or enroll into a formal degree program to pursue that coursework. So a certificate is a standalone bona fide credential that's coming from uh, the Board of Governors when you finish that certificate. So uh, it is not attached to a formal program. So that's, I would say, that would be the, the big difference there. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. Next question, I am not familiar with APA writing style. Are there resources to help me learn? Would it be difficult for me to be successful at CSU Global without APA knowledge? We do have a lot of resources to help, and this is a very common concern coming from new students. Uh, so we have a writing center that has resources that can help you um, improve your skills with APA. We also have tutoring available. So as you're getting the hang of things, you can send your written assignments to a tutor who would be able to help you. Uh, so certainly it shouldn't be something that holds you back because it is um, a format that you can learn and we do have resources available. Right, and just to add a little bit more to that, the first courses that you take at CSU Global will help you get acquainted with APA. So it's a place, those first couple classes and either your, your bachelor's or your master's degree, um, it's a place to learn about professional writing, to improve, to grow, to make mistakes and to, um, basically apply yourself. So as long as you're showing growth and improvement, that's what the professor is going to be looking for. So APA is not something that somebody can master right away. It just takes time and practice 
And those first introductory courses really help you get on your feet and get in the habit of using APA. So certainly it's not something to be intimidated by. It is something that you'll pick up over time and just improve on. Um, so just wanted to just add that little bit there. Great, thank you. I'm interested in biology. Are the first couple of years of a bachelor's program at CSU Global Basic something that I could transfer to a different university to finish my degree in biology after completing the basic courses at CSU Global first? Yes, so we do have what are called GT Pathways courses that essentially you can complete general education classes. Now we can't guarantee the transfer of any courses to any other institution, but generally GT pathway courses can transfer into any uh, public institution in Colorado. And typically that's the case for a lot of other uh, public institutions as well. And uh, you can complete a lot of gen eds at CSU Global. If you're planning on transferring from CSU Global to another institution, you wanna stay in close communication with both uh, institutions just to ensure that the courses you're taking at one will indeed transfer to the other. And those are just sort of the conversations that you'll want to have with both of the enrollment departments uh, just to make sure that uh, nothing is lost in the transfer. But typically, yes, we are a regionally accredited public state university. So as long as you're moving to another legitimate uh, school for transfer, you can, let, let's say, take, um, you know, some sort of gen ed classes, science classes, uh, science classes with a lab, et cetera, and transfer those uh, out. Great, thank you. Am I able to transfer credits in for my master's program? What if these credits are not relevant to the degree program I'm pursuing? So we do allow students to transfer up to nine credits into a master's degree program. That is three courses. Um, they would need to be very relevant to the specific coursework that you're transferring them in for. So at the undergraduate level, you have a lot more flexibility because there are elective credits. And so as long as that course is recognized, we can probably find a place for it at the undergraduate level. At the graduate level, it's more difficult to get the transfer credit because we will need to see that you've had a pretty clear match as far as whichever course it's transferring in for. Um, one other thing I will say on this topic is that your graduate degree does not necessarily have to be related to what your undergraduate degree was. So we don't require you to have a background for many of our master's degree programs. There are some where if you don't have a background, you may be required to take prerequisite courses first. Uh, but just because you don't have a background in a particular area doesn't mean you can't go for a master's degree in that area. Great, thank you. In the presentation, you mentioned uh, discounts that were available through affiliate partnerships. How can I find out if my employer is an affiliate of CSU Global? Right, so there is a place on our website where you can search for our affiliate partnerships. If you go to the cost tab and look for the affiliate partner discounts section there, uh, you will be able to reference our full list of affiliate partners. Um, you can also just get in touch with the, one of our enrollment counselors and in your conversation, mention your company and they can cross-reference our internal list as well and notify you if you are eligible for that discount. Um, we have, like Travis mentioned, over 2,000 partners spanning from extremely large corporations to medium to small size organizations from all over uh, the United States. So it, there's a good chance that if um, you, know, you work for a larger company, we, we do have a lot of those partnerships already established, but certainly you can search the website or as you're introducing yourself to our enrollment counselor, um, do mention always your employer so we can get you that 10% discount if you do work for one of our affiliated partners. Wonderful. You mentioned out of state and in-state tuition being the same. Does this also include out of country students as well? It does. 
Yeah, so I saw in the Q&A there was a question about someone from Canada. Yes, um, the tuition does not change based on being in another state or another country. Great. Are tests and quizzes part of courses at CSU Global? So quizzes, yes. Uh, we, for, at the undergraduate level, every week you will have something called the mastery exercise, which will essentially be uh, testing your knowledge over the reading that you have done that week. Um, at the graduate level, you will not have the mastery exercises. Um, regarding tests, um, what you'll mostly have are going to be either research papers or projects. Uh, very rarely will you have examinations. I think there are just a few classes, uh, typically IT, uh, mathematics related courses might have some examinations, but ultimately we're looking for students to apply their knowledge through uh, research and concept analysis. So uh, it is rare that you will have any types of exams. Um, should you have some sort of examination, it will be proctored uh, through um, your computer so that you would never need to go to a testing center or anything like that. 100% of the coursework can be done from your home. So the vast majority of assignments will uh, be related to research and project-based learning. Great. How do I interact with my professor? Another great question. It, it really is highly dependent on the individual professor. Um, your instructors do have a 24 hour response time to your emails. So if you email an instructor, you can expect to hear from them relatively quickly. Many of our instructors hold office hours during the week where you can call in or participate via Zoom like we're doing now to have a more in-depth discussion. Uh, and many of them are also certainly open to scheduling those at times where it's convenient to you if uh, you do need some additional assistance from them. Great. Are there any clubs, student organizations, or other social opportunities available for this online platform? Yes, we do have an array of student clubs and associations that you can join, ranging from academic uh, honor societies all the way to our alumni associations, veterans associations. So there is a great deal of organizations that you can get involved with. And also you're through our um, uh, systems, you can also make connections with other students. Um, so yes, there's a, a lot of social interaction going on. Great. Is there an in-person commencement? There is. We have in-person commencement each June, and we've, for the last many years, had that in the first bank center in Broomfield, Colorado. Uh, so we, we do have that opportunity, and we have students who travel from all across the country to be a part of that each year. Great. Are there tutoring services available at CSU Global? Yes, so we offer 24-7 uh, tutoring services. And the way that works is essentially just schedule your appointment ahead of time. And whatever time of day it is, somebody will be there to assist you. And uh, the tutoring services uh, are also complemented by a writing center. So, you know, if this is the first time you're using APA writing format, or if you just have some questions about the structure or format, of your essay, you can work with a writing center professional to review your work, to help you make sure you're citing your sources correctly and uh, tackling the questions in an appropriate way. So uh, this is of course all included in your tuition. You never have to pay a cent more for the, these types of support services. Great. Um, is attending part-time, if attending part-time, how many classes would I take during a full calendar year as a bachelor's or master's student? So one class at a time, you would complete six courses in a year. Uh, so it would be um, at the, at the um, 
the graduate level, that's the standard, is to just take one class at a time. If you're an undergraduate student, it would be a very long road to do it that way. Thank you. And the last and final question, is there any connection or partnership with programs at CSU Fort Collins? Uh, we, the main thing I would say would be our GT Pathways program. So essentially, any gen ed that you take as a part of the G that's labeled GT Pathways in our academic catalog, uh, that would be a guaranteed uh, transfer to CSU Fort Collins. And so we do have a strong uh, transfer credit reciprocity program there. Uh, so that is uh, are probably the extent of our um, sort of um, inter-institutional um, curricular um, partnership. It's also worth mentioning, Kevin, in, in case you joined late, that CSU Global is part of the Colorado State University system. So we are operated by the same Board of Governors as CSU in Fort Collins and the CSU in Pueblo. Great. A big thank you to Travis and Stan for your time and the information you shared with us today. It was wonderful. Before you go, please take a moment to answer the poll question on your screen. Also, just a reminder that we, we will be sending uh, this recording as well as that application waiver code. If you do decide that CSU Global is right for you, please be sure to look out for that email because it will save you that $25 um, off of your application fee as Stan mentioned. So thank you. And that concludes our career series webinar for this afternoon. Thank you to all of our viewers for joining us and your wonderful questions. We hope you found the conversation informative and useful for your educational and career goals. We hope to see you again as a CSU Global Golden Eagle, which is our mascot. So on behalf of everyone at Colorado State University Global, thank you and have a great rest of the day.